NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew-9 next February, uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed, and the specifics in the schedule will be discussed momentarily. Uh, I want you to know that Boeing has worked very hard with NASA to get the necessary data to make this decision. <clears throat> we want to further understand the root causes and understand the design improvements so that the Boeing Starliner will serve as an important part of our assured crew access to the ISS. I have just talked to the new Boeing CEO, Kelly Ortberg. Uh, I have expressed this to, the, to him. I told him uh, how well Boeing uh, worked with our team to come to this decision. And uh, he expressed to me uh, an intention that uh, they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely and uh, that we will have our redundancy and our crewed access to the space station. Uh, this whole discussion, remember, is put in the context of we have had mistakes done in the past. We lost two space shuttles as a result of there not being a, a culture in which information could come forward. Uh, we have been very solicitous of all of our employees that if you have some objection, you come forward. Space flight is risky even at its safest, safest and even at its most routine. And a test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. And so the decision to keep Butch and Sonny aboard the International Space Station and bring the Boeing Starliner home uncrewed is a result of a commitment to safety. Our core value is safety, and it is our North Star. And I'm grateful to NASA and to Boeing for their teams, for all the incredible and detailed work to get to this decision. The, the bottom line relative to bringing Starliner back is it was just, there was just too much uncertainty in the prediction of the thrusters. If we had a model, if we had a way to accurately predict uh, what the thrusters would do for the undock and all the way through the deorbit burn and through the separation sequence, I think we would have taken a different course of action. But when we looked at the data and looked at the potential for thruster failures with a crew on board uh, and then getting into this very tight sequence of finishing the deorbit burn, which puts the vehicle on an entry, and then immediately uh, maneuvering from that into a SEP sequence to separate the service module and crew module. It was just too much risk with the crew, and so we decided to pursue the uncrewed uh, testing. <clears throat> um, the path forward now is to, as Ken said, work toward the flight readiness review part two. Well, we review now. We know the scope of the mission. We know it's an uncrewed test flight. Uh, we are changing the separation sequence that we planned, and we will review those aspects at the readiness review. We're going to go with a simplified uh, separation technique to get away from station a little more quickly. Um, we'll get to the deorbit burn and execute that nominally. Uh, we have a good setup in terms of the opportunities uh, into the White Sands Space Harbor for a number of opportunities in September. Um, we'll, we'll land or undock in early September, and then we have a lot of work to do uh, relative to the the rest of the mission, which is Bush and Sunny stay on the space station for some time and they return on Crew-9. We're configuring that spacecraft with a couple extra, uh, uh, two different seats. So we'll have two different crew members, uh, two crew members on that vehicle and then we'll have it ready to bring Bush and Sunny home. So they'll be ballast in two seats on the uphill. Um, 
We also have to work to reconfigure the, the Crew-8 vehicle. When Starliner undocks, it will undock first, and then the Crew-8 vehicle will serve as the lifeboat for Butch and Sonny. We have a configuration on the cargo pallet we'll go put in place. So again, um, we'll get Calypso home <coughs> and ready to do so. We're gonna take uh, our time taking the steps, uh, each step along the way. We'll have an important simulation ahead of that flight readiness review with the flight control team. You know, if you put yourself in their place, they have practiced uh, for two years to bring a crew home on Starliner. There are some differences uh, in executing the undock sequence and the uh, coast to the deorbit burn and the deorbit burn without a crew, and so they're gonna practice that next week. Um, I'm extremely grateful for the commercial crew program, the entire team. Uh, it's an honor to represent them here today, and I'll turn it over to Dana Weigel. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all very much for being here, for your interest in this uh, historic test flight mission and also in the International Space Station. Um, as you heard with the decision to leave Butch and Sonny on board till February, they'll be with us on station for eight months. I think most of you know our normal expedition durations are six months long, but we have had a number of uh, flights with astronauts who've stayed on board with us for 12 months at a time. So this eight month stay is very much within our normal operational experience base. While Butch and Sonny are on board, they'll be doing science, station maintenance, um, they'll execute the SpaceX 31 research and cargo mission, and we may have a couple spacewalks for them towards the end of their expedition. Um, since they've been up there, they've been a welcome set of helping hands. They've already done about 100 hours of work on 42 different experiments, and they've helped us with some of the uh, critical station maintenance that we've had on board. For us, looking forward, the station team is focused on the planning and the rework for the uh, undock, the Starliner undock. As you heard from Steve, that's targeted for early September. Before we hit that undock window, we're gonna do the work to reconfigure the Crew-8 Dragon. We'll probably do that within the next week or so to have that in place for a six crew contingency return capability. And just to reiterate, as Steve said, this just gives us uh, a contingency capability after Starliner departs and before the Crew-9 vehicle arrives. Uh, crew-9 with two crew will launch no earlier than September 24th. We'll do a normal uh, handover uh, between the, the crews and then we'll have Crew-8 undock. After that, we will relocate the Crew-9 vehicle, so that Dragon vehicle will be relocated to open up the forward port for the SpaceX 31 cargo mission. And we're planning that mission somewhere in mid-October.